Now, in continuing uh, with the integrated series that we do in NAMS, where we discuss radiology and pathological uh, Im findings in a disease, today we will talk about cryptococcal meningitis. And to begin with, I will show you a brief history of this patient. This is a, we had a patient, a 40 year old HIV positive patient and he had clinically suspected meningitis and he was sent to us for a MRI because of the alter sensorium. So when we did the MRI of the patient, I want you to look at this first image. This is a T1 weighted MRI image. So how do you know this is T1 weighted MRI image? Look at the CSF filled spaces, they appear dark and you can see the white matter is white, the gray matter is gray and the bones are dark, fat is white. This is typical of an MRI image. So what do you think is the outstanding feature in this image? When you look at this image carefully, this is the area of the midbrain. Okay, and as I see the midbrain, these are the cerebral peduncles, you can see some small hypo intense millimetric size cystic areas extending towards the basal ganglia from the midbrain. Now if I reconfirm it on a T2 weighted image, how do I know this is T2 weighted image? CSF appears white. Now I know this and the white matter is appearing darker here. You can see these micro cystic changes in the basal ganglia, in the midbrain, in this area. So you have this very classic distribution where you see micro cystic changes in the distribution of the lenticulostriate artery distribution. Now let us try and put things together on the basis of the images that we have seen. Again, look at the another image at a higher level. This is the at the level of basal ganglia. You can see these tiny microcystic changes, tiny microcystic changes. Now let's try to put everything together that we have seen. Clinically suspected meningitis, immunocompromised patient, and you may have you know basal exudates. If we had a contrast enhanced image, we could have seen meningeal enhancement or meningeal thickening. And if we look at the MRI, it is showing me cyst tiny cystic changes. This, these tiny cystic changes, they represent widening of the perivascular spaces, which we can also call as the Verco-Robin spaces. These are typical of cryptocoal meningitis. The microcystic changes, basal exudates, meningeal thickening, these are typical of uh, uh, cryptocoal meningitis. So let us hand over to Diksha to talk about the pathological changes in this disease. So looking at the gross photo, we can see here, uh, there is thickened and opaque meninges. So like Sir said, there can be meningeal thickening and opacity of the me meningeal membranes should make us think of cryptococcal meningitis. Now looking at another gross photo, here we can see multiple multicystic spaces, tiny gelatinous material filled multicystic spaces in a very multifocal presentation. Here is a close up view. This appearance is called a soap bubble. Okay. Appearance. So that is the uh, counterpart of the radiological image that Correct. we saw. So probably we are looking at a basal ganglia with lenticulostriate yeah. artery is most commonly involved. And here this is a full mount photograph, beautiful picture where we can see multi cystic spaces in HLE. This actually looks like MRI to me, grey matter, white matter. It, it, it's the same know. thing, uh -huh. Almost the colored same. version. <laughs> colored version. <laughs> And here is the microscopic characteristic feature. We talked about how perivascular spaces are expanded. So here we can see an expanded perivascular space. These are the vessels. These are the perivascular spaces. And you can see they are filled with multiple spores of cryptococcus. And very characteristic finding is there is absent or minimal inflammation and hardly any gliosis, which is very characteristic of cryptococcal meningitis and meningo encephalitis. And when we do special stains like PAS, we can see the spores that are highlighted. And a very nice stain that we use on CSF fluid, that is India ink. Is which that is a, a negative, negative uh, staining? staining. So, so that the background is stained. Background, background is stained, stain. and the gelatinous capsule, the mucoid capsule of the spores are not stained. So that looks like a halo around every spore. So this is a very characteristic stain we use to identify cryptococcus. And now I would like to use this opportunity to uh, summarize what we have seen. So cryptocal meningitis should be kept in differential diagnosis of a patient with meningitis, especially if it, he is immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. The key thing to remember is that a differential diagnosis, if you see basal exudates on a radiological image, differential diagnosis would include tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. 
how were these microcystic changes that we shown you today and if you look at the pathological image look at the soap bubble like appearance that they showed you in pathology and uh, correlated with radiology where you see tiny microcysts they represent th dilatation of the perivascular or worker robin spaces due to the inflammatory material due, uh, to, due the to the spores spores, yeah. spores around that right. and uh, pathologically the inflammation is usually very minimal, very minimal to absent in yes. this disease so that's a very key take home and do not forget the india ink yes. and do not forget the appearance of the spores on yes. the uh, histopathological yes. yes yes so with this we conclude this part of the uh, integrated approach that we create in dams i would again recommend that you follow us on dams elite channel on youtube for more such videos thank you thank you